Hey guys, Jim at uh, Motor Home Rehab Ranch. This is episode three, or uh, yeah, three, three. There you go, three. <clears throat> We've already talked about taking it apart. So right now your motorhome should look pretty rough. Should be in pretty, a whole bunch of pieces. And people, friends should have been coming by going, what are you doing? That's okay, that's okay. You remember the, the turtle wins, turtle wins. All right, so <clears throat> back up just a little bit. The coach is all clean. It's all taken apart. You've got a, <clears throat> you got a gallon can of DX330 or equivalent uh, wax and grease remover. Okay. All right, <clears throat> now we have to prep the paint. All right, now the first thing that you, you need to prep the paint is you've got body repair. All right. When I say body repair, in a minute we're going to go out in the, in the field, I'm going to show you. This coach was, was uh, uh, designed by an aircraft engineer put together by the United Auto Workers. Hmm. Boeing aircraft have bonded panels. In other words, the, it's not like a, a DC-3 with rivets all over it. it. The aluminum panels are bonded or glued, if you want to call it that, to the, the superstructure. Well, our coach has aluminum and SMC plastic. The aluminum pieces were all welded together in a jig, but the plastic parts were glued to it, okay? Uh, so back in 1973, and even, even sometimes today, but better, better living through chemistry, you know, they have really good uh, adhesives today. And we know enough now, we know enough now to read the instructions. You've got to get this stuff clean. You know, it just doesn't stick. Uh, an epoxy type uh, uh, adhesive must, the, the, the surface must be prepped. You've got to get all the oils and greases and everything like that. You've got to get that out of the way for an epoxy to grab. Now, epoxy will grab to <clears throat> plastic. Our panels are plastic. It'll grab to aluminum. It'll grab to fiberglass. Epoxy resins, two-part, where you have a you have an oxidizer or a hardener, and then you have the base. That two-part epoxy will stick; it'll stick to a turd. It's it's tough, but you've got to prep the surfaces. Now, <clears throat> you look at your body where the panels come together. <clears throat> I'll show you in a minute. But where the panels come together, it's not uncommon to see a, a, one of those pieces lifted or popped loose. And on 73s and 74s, uh, I doubt there's a 73 or 74 out there that does not have a rivet holding some part of the body together because they didn't go. They didn't, they didn't stick. Bubba and Scooter either didn't realize <laughs> how to glue epoxies together or they used the wrong epoxy or they didn't know exactly about epoxies because uh, an inordinate amount of early style coaches have uh, body panel lift or pop, pop panels. Um, and it must have happened in the manufacturer because the, the rivets are painted with the same paint as the original paint, which means those rivets had to be put on before it was painted, which means they didn't stick the first time, right? So, <clears throat> and as, it, as the years went on, 78s, no rivets I've seen in a 78. I think, I think, the, uh, I think they got the idea in the, in the, uh, in the assembly line. So... You've got to bond, rebond those panels together. And what you use is a two-part epoxy. And you've got to get the surface clean, the wax and grease remover, okay? You got a popped panel. Take a, a, a cat found a little something to, to chase there. Um, clean out the surface, put a rag or a brush up in there and get some wa uh, wax and grease remover up in there Okay, now you've heard the term uh, belts and suspenders. When you want to glue something to it, okay, if you're going to paint the coach for sure, you want to countersink a rivet, belts and suspenders, glue and rivet, okay. If it's a panel that you're not going to paint, okay, make darn sure you've got it held tight. Pull it in a doorway and prop something in the doorway to push it tight so when you, when you put the glue in there, 
You really get it tight and it'll bond real good together. Okay? Very, very important to get it in there. Now, if the crack is so wide, it's like huge. <clears throat> Be honest with you, they're not perfect. They look like it. It almost fits perfect. And if there's a one there that, you, man, you got to push everything to push it down, maybe leave it where it is, bag it off, and fill it with the epoxy. Just fill it. Leave it like where it is. Clean it all out. Take the stress off of it and fill it. And then if you're going to paint it, it just look like a little another part of the body. I mean, <clears throat> perfection is a tough thing when you've got all these body panels. There's 16 pla uh, SMC molds that made the outside of that body. That means there's, there's, there's 16 panels on that thing that made it all together. So the original design was all glued together. It didn't work. Okay, So you've got to fix all that. Next thing you're going to fix, and I'll show you, are cracks. Cracks. Stress cracks. The glue, glue didn't let go, but the plastic crack, because it's got to, and a really good place over the rear wheels right there in the corner, or in the front, the front wheel liner. If you have an engine cover, you'll see a crack there, or in the corners. You'll see a crack in the, in the plastic. Well, we've got to deal with that, all right? So how do you deal with that? If you've got to pull it down, you know how to bond it down. If it's a crack, <clears throat> take uh, something and make a V. Cut the crack. Cut into it. Make a V. And then you're going to fill it with epoxy filler or epoxy glue, hardened woodpecker lips. Put that in there and sand it down, and that'll, that'll bond that crack together. You know, uh, all that stuff needs to be fixed. By the way, you know, when you're, when, you're, uh, when you're preparing the thing, remember you stripped it down, right? So there are no vent roof covers. There are no plumbing vents. There are no air conditioners up there. And you say, oh, man, that thing's heavy. Yeah, it is. If it's original, you ought to just throw it off and leave it off because it's just, you know. But all underneath there, there's rivets. There's all kinds of things. And if you don't paint it, when somebody does change the air conditioner, especially if it's an old one, won't be very long, you'll have a big, what, yellow spot on the roof? I mean, you know, take it off, man. Do it right. Take all this stuff off. And look at all the cracks, look at all any lifted rivets. Same thing under the rails. Go review that video about uh, sealing the rails. And be thinking about, in the process, you come, the, the rail comes up, and you clean all the goop and pucky out. By the way, goop and pucky. Look it up. Google it. Goop and pucky. Um, it's a word my uncle used to talk about greasy stuff. I think it was my uncle. Some other interesting individual. <laughs> but... Um, it means stuff you don't want to touch. So you dig all that goop and pucky out of there. Now you stop. You, that's called prepping for paint. You get all this stuff out of there, now you're ready to paint. Now you can dig all that goop and pucky off of the rail that's sitting on the side, sand it all up uh, when we do the prep, and then you'll be ready to paint that. All right, well, look. <clears throat> I made a, a real quick one here. Let's go look at some of these things I talked about. Uh, uh, you say, wow, I wanted to talk about more. Believe me, you're going to wear your fingers off doing just what I'm talking about, fixing the cracks, bonding things back to there, make sure it all gets apart, okay? All right, well, come on out. Let me show you a couple of them. All right, guys, we're outside here with the Eleganza. Here's the rear hatch. Remember we talked about the rear panel screws? Take a look here. You can see this rear panel screw is rusted. It's got a crack right there. So these panel screws are going to need to be taken out before this thing's painted. If you painted it with that, then it would start rusting again. It would look terrible. All right, come on around here. <clears throat> a lot of you guys, the ones that have this rear piece, by the way, this is the same door that's up there uh, for your fuel. But these doors get a lot of rust in them and things like that. So you have to kill this rust. They have, they have a chemical you can put on this to kill them and, uh, and then reprime this. So you want to clean this stuff off. Go to your automotive paint store and they'll show you some stuff to kill the rust here. Take a look here. See how this is pulled away? Now, the reason they did this, this is plastic. This is an aluminum panel. There's no way to pull this thing out. So what did they do? They just filled it. 
you didn't even notice if I didn't, it didn't show it to you. They just filled it, let it go. So that's a good thing to do right there. You don't think about it. But look, you can see the water trail, trail on this uh, vent cover. And right here, it's cracked. But we're, you say you see a crack here, that's fine. But this crack here, water goes there, it'll go right in that crack. By the way, this is the original one. It's made by, you'll see here, it says, it'll say straw sign. Um, the original <clears throat> uh, hinge for the little plastic uh, panel that's up in there as a flapper was a piece of duct tape. Don't be surprised if you don't have that up in there. Uh, get another vent. They got several different kinds. But uh, this is real important. Water got in here and wiped out the kitchen, kitchen wall in the back. <clears throat> you'll have, chances are you'll have uh, rubbers that shrunk up and pulled away from here. We did a video about how to replace your window rubbers. This one's going to need new rubbers. Uh, they'll refinish the frames and uh, when it gets painted. Uh, let's see. Come on, come on with me. Hey, here's one. See, this panel pulled away a long time ago. See, it's still moving. It's cracked right there. Water go right in there. See, they tried to seal it once, but not good enough. All right. See, they tried to push it in. See, they pounded it in right here, broke the paint, pounded it down to where this was, then tried to seal the rest of it. Um, I dig all that stuff out and see how much you can bond down before you repaint it. Same thing here. You kill this rust in here. Uh, by the way, if you're going to paint it original and, and the uh, paint shop wants a sample of the color, take these two rivets and take the, take the fuel door. It's a small thing you can take and it'll have, if you want to duplicate the colors here, it's got all the colors you need. So you can use this as your sample piece. Rivet it back in. Okay, come on around. <clears throat> Down here is lower dash valance. There's lower grill valance here below the, the grill. You can see how it's, it's not lined up. Okay, what's happened here is the body has, has bowed out, and I'll guarantee you this thing has chipmunk cheeks on it. This needs to be taken apart. This needs to be pulled back together. We pull back together and reset. The uh, grill will fit better in it. Uh, and let's see, looking down the sides, sure enough, right there, if you look down the side, you can see there's a little bulge right there. Right there. Bulging out, it's got chipmunk cheeks. What's happened is the body has done one of these numbers because it's broken apart, broken free from the, from the, uh, the floor, which rotted out. So it broke free and was like this. Inside here, you'll see an air gap right where this, this hits the body. That's where air goes in. You gotta pull the cheeks in. We did a video on that. Pull the cheeks in. I know it's out because that doesn't fit. All right. Then right here, they've obviously had a big problem. Tried to fix it once with a rivet, came loose. See, they sanded it down past the gel coat into the, into the resin. So it's going to be a little bit of work to get this fixed. And uh, this needs to be bonded back on here. See, they tried to seal it once. Um, this is going to have to be, get, some, get some repair done to it. <laughs> you can see the, the uh, body side molding shrunk. So, you know, you can't fix that. You just take it off. The door, <clears throat> somebody's had problems in the past. Somebody put a washer in it and a bolt. There, the original, the original uh, bushings in here are plastic. There it is right there. The plastic bushings were out and the whole hinge drops down. So they tried to lift it up with this washer right here. Put a bolt through it. You can get these pins and bushings. They make bronze oil light bushings now that you can replace these with. Most the auto parts store has it on that help wall. Uh, you'll see pins and bushings. You'll see the ones that fit here. That door needs to be reset. Yep, it's dragging at the bottom. That's because these hinges have dropped. Right now is the time to fix that. And then this is common. These rear doors are really, really thin. This has been fixed once before, it cracked again. It lost its strength, let's look underneath. Oh yeah, yeah, see, somebody tried to put some 
glass in here. Obviously, didn't do much of a job. Uh, they probably used polyester resin, polyester fiberglass resin to fit it. As you see, polyester resin does not stick to plastic. You have to use an epoxy-based resin to get it to stick. Resins, fillers, all that kind of stuff has to be an epoxy base. That's the reason this broke back out. They did a good job. I mean, in nine, nine times out of ten, it'd be fine, except this is plastic. It's not fiberglass. This is what happens. It just breaks back out. All around the coach, all these vertical seams <clears throat> need to be tight, but don't fill them. You're going to fill the seams with, with a urethane sealer called um, a seam sealer. <laughs> but you, you put it in the seam, but then you wipe it out. Take your finger and wipe it out. You want that seam to be dry right down to the bottom. Say, what? Yeah, the seam is not in the bottom. It's where these two come together. It's right here is where the crack is. So when you put the seam sealer in there, you want to push it into the crack, but it's got to be dry in the bottom. Why? Because the seam sealer is more flexible than the paint. So if you fill that thing, temperature going around turns, it, it flexes, the seam sealer will pop out. It'll shrink. So you want the seam sealer in the crack, but you don't want it in this main crack because it'll crack out. So fill the thing, then wipe it dry, wipe it clean, which will push just a little bit of seal. See, you know, garbage doesn't help. If you've got a crack and you put a blob on the top of it, a pound of blob, that's not any better than just sealing it right, right in the crack. Right? And actually the blob might catch up more wind and blow off. So you put it in there and you wipe it out. Put it in, wipe it out. All the seams, vertical, horizontal seams, cross seams, all the seams on these things where two panels come together, you put it in, you put it in, you wipe it out. Got to keep them dry, okay? <clears throat> all right, so that'll get you going a little bit. Fix all the body parts, fix the cracks, fix things that don't line up, you know, fill the seams, you know. Now, we're going to come back and do a seam seal again, but I want you to put the stuff in there and seal it off, and then we're going to go after the sanding process. We might sand most of that back out, but that's okay. Remember, it only seals where the stuff goes in, not that junk on the top that we're going to sand off, right? All right. Well, look, thanks. This is episode three. Three? Yeah, that's, that's a professional way to do it, right? Three? All right, this is episode three. Uh, this will get you going. Uh, the next episode will be um, <laughs> the part It's like you're, you're trying to sand the Gobi Desert. The best way to demoralize a, a production painter, what's a production painter? Production painter is a guy that gets like four coaches, four cars painted, you know, in a day, you know, two before lunch, two after lunch. He's just hammering. He you say, hey, go, go DA, sand that motorhome. Let me know when you're done. He'll run away screaming. Ah, I can't take it. It goes on forever. Well, it's true. It's big. So the next thing we're going to do, if you've got all that other stuff done, Eat your Wheaties, and we'll talk about sanding. Next time, gentlemen, ranch hands, thank you. Remember, click, subscribe, and share. Bye-bye.